Welcome to a video from thislifestyle.com. Here in my hands, I have the new Surface Laptop for Business 13 inch. This is the new slightly smaller one uh, in terms of physical size. Snapdragon X Plus processor, 24 gig of RAM, one terabyte of storage. So what I'm gonna do in this video is give you my initial first impressions of the Surface as well. So I'm gonna fire it up and box it. Um, so I'm gonna fire it up, have a look what's in the box and then I'll give my initial uh, first impressions and compare it to some of the other Surface devices. Then I'll probably follow up with a video a little bit later on about battery life, because battery life's really important on these. The Snapdragon is really efficient, but I can't tell you that straight away. I need to spend some time with it. So let's uh, have a look what's in the box. We've got the Surface, which you'll see there, very nice, smooth design i'll compare that to the other surface laptop shortly we've got power supply but it's usb c there's no surface connector on these new ones so yeah included is a usb c charger with the right ports and whatever and that's it really there's not a huge amount it comes in the box anymore we've not got big the big surface you know like i said surface adapter anymore USB C charger. So let's get, um, let me compare it now physically with the other Surface. So this one here is a Surface Laptop 6 for business, uh, which is the same size as the Surface Laptop 7. And if I put them side by side like that, you can see there the difference in the, in the physical sizes. So the, the you can see that the, the, the smaller Surface Quite a bit smaller, actually. We'll see what the screen size looks like. It feels a much more compact unit than the, the the bigger Surface. It's certainly got a nice, smooth, curved feel on this compared to the sort of more angular Surface laptop, which you can see here. So the, it's a lot smoother, it's a bit curv curvier and nicer to hold in hand and doesn't feel as as sharp. Let's compare this with one of the Surface Pros, one of the new sur the newer Surface Pros, and you can see actually it's pretty much exactly the same physical size, if not a little bit thicker. You can see on there, but it's almost yeah, it's almost the same size. It's slightly deeper. So that's going to be interesting to see how that compares. In terms of ports, there you can see the two USB C ports and USB Type B. And so, in terms of ports, you can see the two USB C, the traditional USB port on there, and a headphone port. And that's it, there's no dock to it. So, while that sets up, so Powered on, I've just opened the lid and it came straight on. I've put my Wi Fi key on. It's now going to do the updates now, which uh, takes some time. Initial impressions of it, it feels very nice, compact without really sacrificing too much. It doesn't feel tight and compact. The keys seem spaced out exactly the same as they were on the other laptop, um, but it's taking up a considerable sort of amount of space less. So there's the key layout on the on, my, on the the full size laptop, we call it full size laptop. This is the 13 one. It feels a lot more compact, and in fact, I would say it feels like a step between the this the bigger Surface laptop and the Surface Laptop Go, which I'm not sure Microsoft are even bringing out new versions of that anymore. I haven't seen a new version for a while. So this maybe sits below the full size laptop seven as the sort of compact version. I'll give you some specs now while um, while that's that's uh, processing while that's going through. So this is using the Snapdragon X Plus processor. So it's slightly lower spec processor than on the say one of the new Surface Pros with the um, the Snapdragon on them. The MPU is a Qualcomm Hexagon and is. Uh, Adreno GPU on there. So this is the the Snapdragon ARM based version of Windows that's running on here. We'll talk about that and what the um, limitations or benefits will be that 
shortly. I've got the 32 gig, uh, uh, sorry, the 24 gig spec version of that on here as well. It's got um, a terabyte storage on there. But there are, there's a 256 version available as well. It's got a 13 inch pixel sense display running at 1920 by 1280. And 10 point multi touch on there. No pen support on this model. So that's one thing that's changed from the earlier Surface laptops is that the recent ones don't have um, pen support on them. And at Microsoft say that was because the, the telemetry was telling them that pen users weren't, or laptop users weren't using the pen. I do have a pen, which is one of my other surfaces, and I must admit I hardly ever use it on the laptop, perhaps to sign a document. And that's about the only time I ever think of picking up the pen. On the tablet, it makes sense, but on a laptop, maybe less so. So um, it's probably not too uh, sad to see that go. So it weighs 1.22 kilograms. So, it, And it's got a nice balance to the chassis as well. So it does feel nice. It does feel light. Other things to mention on the specs as well, this has uh, those USB-C C ports, port charging, fast charging display port and you can run two 4k monitors at 60 hertz on there and so it also supports the sun, the surface thunderbolt 4 dock the one that's got the usb c on there and it's got fast charging as well 60 watt charger that uh, via a 60 watt charger but wi-fi 7 and bluetooth 5.4 it comes with windows 11 pro this is the one for business so while this downloads the latest updates I'll come back when that's done and we'll talk about ARM versus Intel differences. So one interesting thing I found on this is actually got a fingerprint reader. So as well as using Windows Hello, I can also use a fingerprint reader, which is built into the power, power button. So I'm going to set that up as well. Now, a controversial feature here is Windows Recall. I talked about it in this last video, and I will show it on here. So Windows Recall, it's capturing the screen all the time, and then you can go back through it and effectively get the screen grab of where you were, and it will then use text to be able to uh, AI to extract the text from that. So it's not like um, re rolling the PC back to an earlier time. It's looking back through it and being able to grab images and text from that as well. Where it's controversial is, is the privacy is it's recording everything that you're doing. So I'm going to say yes, and I'll show you what it looks like when we get it powered on. So I'm just installing Office now. I've installed Camtasia Studio. I want to just test some sort of real world application stuff on it. But before I get to that, I'm going to have a look at some of the AI stuff on here. So um, here is Windows Recall. There's not a lot of data in this because I've only had it powered up for the last sort of couple of hours. Um, I can open Recall. And I can pause it. Well, let's open it. I need to authenticate using the fingerprint reader. So here you can see is the Office client that was open. And I can go back in time now, obviously only to today. And so here is okay, maybe here where I opened YouTube. And you can see that I can see the text on here. So um, if I go into there, I can copy that text, I can summarize it, I can create a bullet pointed list, I can search the web. So you can see it's grabbing the, that screen text off there. So I'm not rolling back the whole thing back in time to that point in time. I'm looking at the screen and then I can use AI to extract that information. So if you can't remember exactly where you were, at least you can search for it, it bring it back up and then you can grab that sort of text from it. So I could probably go further back So that's where I first set it up. I was looking at Task Manager. Um, so it's in Camtasia. So you can see I can grab that text from there like that. So let's take that text. I can create a bullet list off that. So it's creating that text from there and we can actually have a look at what it's doing we can see it's using the mpu there so we see it's not handing it off to the cloud it's actually running 
locally using the neural processor for that AI task. I have recall running on the Surface laptop, uh, on the Surface Pro that I've got, and I must admit I don't use it a huge amount, but it is handy when you're trying to go back to something, and that's where it's really valuable. You're trying to think, I had this, I can't remember what it was. You can go back through it, through the time like that, line like that, or you can search for it, and then it kind of reminds you of where you were. So it has its advantages for that, but there is the privacy concerns that people have had over it and you can just disable it and get rid of it or you can pause it um, and you can set up filters so that you can say certain applications say maybe edge you don't want to be recording so you can set that not to record so you've got a lot of control over it say some people don't like it at all and you can snap that up it, it turn that off it does take a bit of storage so um up to 150 gigs so you can sort of bear that in mind this is a terabyte model so plenty of space but it is going to take up space. Yeah, as you see, nice quick to sign in with the fingerprint. Um, it seems actually quicker than Windows Hello because it's not going to fire the camera up and start, uh, you know, looking for you and all that. So I quite like the fingerprint. I use it on uh, my other device, one of my other devices, a Dell device. So I'm kind of used to that. Windows Hello has always been with the camera I was sort of got used to, but yeah, I like that. I uh, just wanted to quickly mention some of the other AI features when we're looking, talking about AI. We've got these camera effects. So you can see I've got their standard blur with creative, and I can turn off standard blur. So you've got these sort of filters. Uh, I must admit, I don't use them that much. The portrait blur is quite nice because that sort of puts the background in sort of a, a blur but you can still sort of make out with it. So it's also gives sort of, sort of give you some depth on there as well, which is pretty good. And you've got portrait light version on there as well. So they're quite good, these. What would be good would be things like teleprompter. So teleprompter is um, enabling you to read off screen and you've still got eye contact with the camera, which is great for sort of doing videos like this where you've got maybe specs going down one side. Oh, you've got the standard sort of eye contact mode as well. So yeah useful effects right i'm going to mention some applications now so i've got a number of applications in installed now i've got office so see i've got word install i've got excel i've got OneNote and powerpoint and everything else all installed i've just briefly played with these before and you know the they are snappy to go through and launch applications as you expect with your know, brand new device Having the 24 gig of RAM is actually pretty is pretty useful in there. The Office applications are all running the native version. I didn't have to select the ARM native version, just installed that sort of native version on there. I also wanted to try some other things. So I've got Camtasia Studio on here, which I use for uh, creating a lot of my videos. And they don't have a native version of that, so it's running emulation. So I downloaded that and installed that and actually seem to work pretty well. So that is good to know that, you know, despite them not being a, a full, you know, a, a, an ARM native version of it, you can use other applications. So for example, I could do a new recording and I can capture the screen and the audio from here. Uh, let's just start that capturing. So I know I can use that, even though it's not a native version, I can just use that. The same goes for um, music production as well. I've got a full video on using music production on ARM-based surfaces, uh, the Snapdragon surfaces. So please check that out. I did that with the Surface Pro. I've not really installed Cubase on this one because I've used all my activation licenses up and installed on different devices. But I have got a little test that I'm going to do in a second. So browsing fast, no problems with that. Native applications like Office all work fine. And then so we've got these. Um, Emulated applications, which also work in fine. I'm going to sort of push it by leaving this screen recorder going. I'm going to plug in a Korg key stage, which is a USB controller keyboard and audio interface. Just going to slide this over, reaching across my office here. So I plugged the keyboard in there and while this is still recording, I'm going to load up um, this GX1 software from Cherry Audio. So again, this is um, 
not a native version. This is just the one version I downloaded, so it's an emulated version. But I can still go into it. I can select the driver. I can use the key stage, which is the synth that's got built-in audio driver of the controller, or I can use the speakers like that. And for MIDI, I can control it through it. And there we can hear. I've got the synth on there. So I get a nice little portable unit running long back to life with the arm, plugged into a USB controller, which itself is powered from USB. So it's taking the power from the from the surface. So it makes it a really nice little portable rig. Um, I can't, with the cables and everything, I can't show you what it looks like all together. But check out my other video of the surface uh, that I did on music video because I'm going to a lot more depth. I'll well, plug that for now. I can stop the camera rendering. I'll just stop the camera um, recording the screen capture. So I can edit that in Camtasia. So that's all worked in there, and I can render that one. And I find usually it's a it's not quite. A, I use a Surface Laptop Studio to render the videos, and it's usually just around a minute render per minute of screen time. So this is rendering pretty much the similar the similar rate, but I'd have to do a more scientific test, uh, which I can do because what I'm going to do following on for this is do um, give it a couple of weeks, and then I'll do a video on how the battery life is, because that's the key thing with these, the Snapdragon processors, they've got the extra long battery life, and I haven't been able to test that because I've just unboxed this today. Um, I unplugged this about 20 minutes ago, something like that, maybe more, and it's still in 100%, but it's, you know, it's not a good test this at the moment. I'm going to have to put it through its paces and see how long the battery life we've got. So in summary, I really like the form factor. I think it's got a right sort of point between so in summary i really like the form factor of this the nice curved edges are i think a big improvement over the other laptop at this the, the other surface laptop and also in terms of screen size or bulk it feels a lot more compact but without sacrificing too much this feels Probably a bit bigger now. The, the, so this feels quite big that one. So I like this form factor. I like the the, the the sort of the sleek finishes to it. There's some compromises like the no pen, um, and then you've got the things like the fingerprint, which I really like as a as a Windows Hello. So I think this will be my sort of go to laptop from now on. I need to test the battery life and the performance. Like I mentioned right at the beginning, some things like special Korg audio drivers don't work. Other things like the Cherry Audio One, Cubase, all works perfectly fine. So, you know, what works for you will depend very much on how well these work. Will depend on very much on what applications you use. Um, I'm skewed towards the music apps, and some things work and some things don't. So, check out my other video. I've got all the details on that. But for Office applications, for browsing, running Copilot, this is going to be great. Um, Recall on there, where you either love it or you hate it, but it's on there on there. Copilot, like I said, with the local processing. So it should be a good device for that. So I'll follow up with another video once I've had some time with it. So thanks for watching this video. Thanks for staying to the end, and I'll see you on the next one.